So, and now imagine a variational principle. A variational principle would be something like that. Given a certain space of functions, then we have a, a functional f, and we look for what is the element of the, so the function, that function, recall that now we are not looking for points. The, the points of the, 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 that we are looking for are functions. We look for those functions who provide an extreme of that functional. So for doing that, we just express that the Gato derivative of the functional is zero for every perturbation which is admissible. Okay? And imagine that finally, after mathematical operations, this is a general expression, that function can be expressed as, I insist, a function e times delta u integrated of omega plus a function t times delta u integrated on the boundary of omega. Well, on gamma sigma, because on delta u, that, that integral is zero because delta u is equal to zero. Okay? And then, and then look, look, that is the most important point. There is a theorem which is not trivial to prove, but you can understand. If that, that function u that provides the extreme of this function, also with this solution, which, which fulfills this variational principle, it's also the solution of two sets of equations. Which one? That e, which is a function of x, ux, gradient of u, is zero in the domain, and that t is zero in the boundary gamma sigma of the domain. So in other words, in other words, that's the point. That's the point. These, in fact, these are partial differential equations. So these, and now we'll see it, we'll see that these, for instance, are the Navier Stokes equations, or the Navier equations for solids, which are functions of u, the displacements, the, and the derivatives of the displacement, right? Imagine that this is that. And they are fulfilled on omega. Right? These are the gamma sigma boundary, the, uh, uh, boundary condition. So that condition that has to be fulfilled at, the, at, at, at gamma sigma. Typically, the tractions, the equilibrium in the boundary. Right? So these are partial differential equations or algebraic equations that have to be fulfilled at the domain and at the, uh, at the boundary, okay? So, the solutions of that problem, the solutions of that problem are the same that the solutions that provide an extrema, an extremum <coughs> for this variational problem. What is the, so, the, what does it mean? That if I am able, born, by any means, of obtaining the solution of the problem, for instance, solving, as we have done in the past, in problems, the partial differential equations, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we obtain the solution. That could be tough, even impossible sometimes. Okay. But by some other means, I'm able to obtain the, sol the minimum. So what u, what is the u that fulfills the degato derivative for any directions, and miserable direction is zero? If I'm always to solve this variational problem, the solution u is the same. And that is the key issue for that. So this is very natural to solve in computational mechanics. Well, not to solve it exactly. That is the basis that is very natural to solve of the, of the equations that are natural to solve approximately in computational mechanics. So the, since the solution is the same, if I solve that problem, in approximately, I'm getting an approximate solution of the original problem. So that is the issue. By using variational principles, we just solve the same problem, which are the original set of equations, and but by solving a problem which is given, look, in integrals. These are integrals. There are no integrals here. These are partial differential equations. These are integrals here. But the, 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 the point is that the solution is the same. And this, as I said, is naturally uh, solved by using computational, computing, computational mechanics. 
OK? So that's the link. We know that by solving that, we obtain the solutions of that. By the way, in mathematics, these equations that, if, imagine that I just get some variational principle, OK? Then I write, the, uh, I am able, after manipulation, to write the variational principle in that way. This E is called, the, this E, which are a set of partial differential equations, are called the Euler-Lagrange equations. These t, which normally are not differential equations, but algebraic equations, are called the natural boundary conditions. Okay? And these conditions, u at x equal gamma, gamma u equals 0, are, goal, are called the essential boundary conditions. So let's do that in an example. Let's do that in 1D. Imagine that I have a functional in 1D, use a 1D function. Def defined in an in interval a, b over r, but with some prescription. So at the point a, at the origin of the interval, we prescribe that this functional has to take the value p. Okay? And now we want to compute, we want to compute with this that function, all that functions, so by replacing here u such belonging to this interval, uh, so all the possible functions, fulfilling this prescription, what is the one that makes minimum the result, f? That's the, the concept of minimum of a, of, a, of a functional, OK? So what is the mathematical equation for that? That the Gateau derivative of f at point u, the solution that you are looking for, for any variation delta u is equal to 0, OK? So let's do that. First, we have to compute the Gato derivative. So we compute the perturbed function with the original function plus epsilon times the perturbation. By the way, if at any point we can want to compute the derivative of this function, that would be u prime plus epsilon eta prime. So we have to differentiate also eta prime. By the way, we have to, to pose that eta has to be zero at the part of the boundary where we have prescription, since u has always, we are just considering that set of functions that at the beginning of the interval are zero, so eta, the perturbations, have to be zero at the beginning of the function. OK, so now we replace in the functional u plus epsilon eta instead of u, we replace here u plus epsilon eta in here, and instead of u prime, we replace u prime plus epsilon eta prime. OK? So the Gato derivative would be the derivative of that with respect to epsilon when epsilon tends to zero. So we do that. We do that, we do that, we operate. We also do some uh, iterating by parts, that's what we have here. And finally, finally, not trivially, but almost trivially, from the original problem, so finding a local minimum of u, the, the functional f of u defined in that way. Look that e, phi can be any, OK? with the boundary conditions of the functions prescribed at the origin of the interval to certain value p, translates the Gato derivative, translates into that, an integral of the, or, uh, on the original domain of derivative of phi with respect to u times delta u, plus the derivative with respect of x of derivative of phi with respect to u prime times delta u, plus this term here at the boundary. So that is the Gato derivative. Well, now, what are the Euler-Lagrange equations of that? The Euler-Lagrange equation is that what multiplies in this integral, the kernel of this integral, the kernel of this integral equal to zero in the domain, and the expression equal to zero at point B. So finally, the Euler-Lagrange equations are this part being zero at all the interval, and this part being zero at the boundary b, the boundary which is not prescribed. Look, that is a set, a partial differential equation. That is a partial differential equation. And this is a boundary condition. So if I solve this equation, I would find, I would find the solution of the problem. This is the Euler, these are the Euler-Lagrange equations. Those are the natural conditions. And the essential conditions 
are the ones that we come from that the function at the, at the point A at the beginning of the integral takes the value P. So, in other words, given any functional, any functional like that, given that functional, we can find the Euler-Lagrange equation of this functional, those. We could find the natural, the essential, the natural boundary conditions, those. How do we find them? Well, what we have done, we just set the Gatto derivative, operate, and obtain that expression here, and that part here is what defines the euler lagrange equations, and that part here is what defines the natural conditions. And this is a set of partial differential equations whose solution makes minimum, what is the solution of that? Well, the solution of that is a function u, u. So that u is the one that will make the minimum of this functional, okay? So, in other words, the duality of a set of differential equations, partial differential equations with boundary conditions and a functional who's who are uh, the looking for an extreme in the functional is the one that we are playing around today. Any time that we have a partial differential equation, that is equivalent to minimizing a certain functional or maximizing, so looking for a statement or certain functional. Or the reverse, every time we have the minimis a, a, virtual war, a virtual principle, so a minimization of the functional, this provides a certain differential equations to be solved. They are equ equivalent. The solution of both are the same. Well, uh, now, we know what is a functional, and that functionals and variational principles, which are minimization of functionals, okay, provide solutions which are equivalent to solutions of certain boundary volume problems, so certain differential equations with cer cer certain prescriptions in the boundary, restrictions in the boundary, which can be essential or natural boundary conditions. Okay, so let's see how this appears in a continuum mechanics. So imagine that we have, as I said before, we have a domain. Let's call the domain omega of V, as we want. Well, omega is the domain, B is the volume of the domain, you can call uh, as, any, as we wish. Part of this domain has some prescriptions, and part of this domain, gamma sigma, has the new, the, now we call the, the uh, traction prescription, okay? So we look for what would be, this being a continuum me medium, what would be the Euler-Lagrange equations of this problem? So what are the differential equations ruling this problem? What are the natural conditions ruling this problem? And what are the essential conditions ruling this problem? Can we identify them? Okay. So first, we have to define the variational form of the problem. The variational form of the problem. So we look for the problem of the continuum mechanics problem we look for expressing them, expressing it in a variational form. So something that multiplies delta u on v and something that multiplies delta u on gamma sigma integrated on gamma u and gamma sigma equals zero for any delta u belonging to some admissible, admissible space of functions. What is the space of function? Well, first, the space of function is those functions that stand for displacements of this continuum medium. These are what I'm looking for. We're looking for the displacements. This is the goal that we have in displacement-based displacement -based formulations in continuum mechanics. Okay. So these displacements have some boundary conditions. They have to be not, not as arbitrary, but prescribed u star uh, on the boundary gamma u. And that boundary they are prescribed. And on top of them, they, no, that's the prescription. This is what we call the, essen the essential boundary conditions. So the space of function is all functions that all mappings from 
the, or the, the domain, the, the body that we consider to R3, so there are dis displacements in, in, in three dimensional, or we are in two dimensional, that would be R2. And B0 is the data space that the, where the perturbations belong, but the difference on, of B and B0 is that delta U, the perturbations, as I said, have to be zero on gamma U. And so we are looking for an expression like that, an integral expression obliging that the integral of U times delta U plus the integral of T times delta U, gamma sigma and, and B respectively, are zero for all delta U being zero on gamma U. So all delta U belonging to the space B0. Okay? Then, that uh, equations E and T are the Euler-Lagrange equation and natural boundary conditions of this variational principle. We know that in virtue of that, that problem that I didn't prove, I just tell you that uh, that could be proven, that if this has to be fulfilled, then necessarily these equations, this part has to be zero, on, on all omega, on, on all, all v, and this part has to be zero on gamma sigma. Okay? So this is equivalent uh, solving that variational problem, then solving that differential equations with that uh, part boundary conditions on gamma sigma and these uh, boundary conditions on gamma u. 